Beneath me is a maze generator and you won't believe what it does. It generates mazes. And I made it into a mini game using nothing but command blocks. And it all started when I saw this Reddit post of someone who created a similar maze generator. And it made me think, I bet I could do that. But nobody would watch a video about a maze generator. So I made it into a format that everybody could appreciate. A mini game. And if you want to see how I did it, then stick around. So in order to make this mini game, I first had to make a maze generator. And this turned out to be harder than I was expecting. And so I'm going to show you how it works, but I'm not going to go through every single command. So if you want to check out all the specifics and play it for yourself, I'll be linking the map in the description of this video. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I make loads of videos like this and you're not going to want to miss out on what's coming up. And with that said, we're going to get right into it. Now the way I went about starting this was I defined where I want my maze to be, and that's just this big wool square. And then I put in a start point and an end point, and I really just tried to connect these two points in a random way to get started. And so I summon an armor stand right here, and this starts the maze algorithm. And how it's working is this armor stand is just gonna look to see if there's an empty spot in any direction, randomly chosen of course, and if there is an empty spot, it's gonna fill that spot with a maze. And then it will just keep doing this until it gets to a point where it has no more spots to fill. Like right here, it's dug itself into a corner and it has nowhere else to go. When it has no more spots to fill, it knows this because there's a path on every side of it. Once there's a path on every side of it, we mark this block as completed. And we do this by placing a dirt block underneath, which is kind of a bad practice. And I wouldn't recommend using physical markers like these, but this project kind of got out of my hands quickly. And so it does work and it works well even, so I'm not really worried about changing it. But once it's placed that marker, it knows that it can back up. And now it will check again to see if every direction is filled. And if it is, it'll do a marker. And it will keep doing this until it backs up and fills every square. Eventually, it will get to a point where it needs to branch off in another direction, like right here. And when it gets here, it will just randomly branch off again and repeat the algorithm until every square is filled. And when every square is filled, it will just retrace its steps all the way back to the start point. And when you see it's finally back at the start point, we know that our maze is complete with every block filled in. And when it gets to the start spot, it will kind of just spin like this because it doesn't know what to do. This isn't really a problem because we can just test for when the armor stand comes back and kill it. And when it gets to a position like this where it's retraced its steps and there's only one option, it's not optimized to pick that option every time. It will choose a random option until it gets there, but it does always get there and in a relatively timely manner. And to make it a little easier for you to see what's going on here, I've turned it all into glass. And you'll see along the black path, there's dirt everywhere it goes. And these dirt are placed as the armor stand tracks back its positioning. And you'll see it's really a grid that we get laid out here. And so the maze is always going to follow that grid. And it actually only tests for wool and concrete the blocks that the maze is made out of, which means that we can expand this infinitely and even into irregular shapes and it will just fill those. Which means that with just building we can expand it into areas like this or even like this and it will just work without any extra code. And when put to full speed the maze generator can get a little too fast for the minigame purpose so I've slowed it down to a one tick delay in all of my command blocks. And this speed seems to be a very reasonable speed where you have time to see it generate but then it also generates fast enough that you're not waiting for a tedious amount of time. And you'll see it'll fill the area in really the only way it can, but it can fill any area you give it with maze. And in my examples, I always start the armor stand right here in front of the starting block, but you don't really have to do that because it's going to fill the entire maze no matter what, which means that any point really along like this grid will be connected and it doesn't have to be a specific point. And for that same reason, our maze generator doesn't really need to know where the ending point is. Any point along the border could be made into an exit. Or you could even have multiple exits like this. There's lots of room for creativity here. Now that we have this maze generator, all that we need to do to take this from a maze and turn it into a labyrinth is turn it 3D and make it a little bit taller. And this is actually pretty easy to do with just one clone command. When we clone it, we filter and clone only the wool. This makes the labyrinth 3D, and while it's not tall enough yet, we can just clone layers and layers upwards until we have it tall enough that we have a full labyrinth. And I made sure to make it tall enough so that when you're in third person, you can't jump and cheat by looking over the walls. And with the labyrinth made, we have almost everything we need to turn this into a full game. Except for it looks kind of ugly. And this isn't going to turn into a building tutorial, but I've watched a few green videos in my time. 
so if you feel an overwhelming urge to comment how beautiful it is, I'd understand. I will admit it's not really the prettiest from the outside, but it's what's on the inside that counts, guys. And I've also gone ahead and added all these windows in the roof because it got really dark in here once I put a roof on everything and the lanterns were not cutting it. And in our beautiful room on top of the labyrinth, I've added a layer of barriers that you can see here. And this is so that the players can walk around and watch the maze generate before they try to solve it. And I've also added these bright boxes to signal the end and the beginning of the labyrinth. And you'll notice at the beginning of the end, the way that we scaled this up, there's this nook on both ends of the labyrinth where you can kind of just run away and get lost. And to make sure that doesn't happen, I've added these border blocks underneath so that when you're in adventure mode, you won't be able to just run away with it. But now that you guys are all done frothing over my building skills, let's talk about how this minigame is actually supposed to work. The idea behind it is that you have all your friends get together and then you press this button to start and you'll be teleported into the maze room. You'll start on this top layer of barriers above the maze while you watch it generate below you. While it's generating, you can all watch and try to remember or get your strategy for how you are going to try to solve the maze the fastest. Once the maze is completed generating, you'll all be teleported into the green room and the race starts. You'll each race through the maze and when you get to the end, you'll be qualified and everybody will qualify for the next round except for the one person who is the slowest, they get disqualified. Now after that, it restarts, everybody's teleported back up and you watch the next maze generate. And this will just keep going on until there's one player remaining and they're crowned the maze master. And remember guys, if this is sounding fun, then you can download the map in the description below and play it with your friends. And I also want to take a moment to let you guys know that I just created a Discord. And if you're this far in the video, you're probably pretty committed to Minecraft commands. And you can find the link to the Discord in the description of this video, so go check it out. And there's one final thing that we need to do before we can get everything set up to finish the mini game, And that's make a lobby. And you may have noticed this in the background of shots. But that's what this black box is. A lobby. And I'm pretty proud of how this lobby turned out. It follows the same maze generating algorithm as the maze itself, but in a cube form. And of course guys, there's barriers, so you're not gonna fall through all these gaps. But then you can look out into the void, and I think it provides a pretty cool aesthetic to go along with the minigame. And now that we have this elegant lobby, a maze generator, and a firm idea of how the game should work, it should be pretty easy and straightforward to set it all up. Right? Wrong. This was so confusing, and I only made it about a week ago, but I have no idea how it works, and I can't figure it out by reading the commands. But basically, when you push this button, there's a scoreboard that will find out how many players are in the world, and you all get teleported from the lobby to the platform. It makes a maze, you all get teleported in, you get timed, and then the last person in is eliminated. And then it keeps going, like we said, until there's one player remaining who tells you who won and who lost, and then all of these command blocks are for, like, catching errors or something, and then all this is just trying to do math, and then all this, I don't even know what it does, and I thought this armor stand did nothing, but then I broke it and the whole thing doesn't work anymore, so don't take that one. But it all works, and it seems to work every time. So give it a play for yourself, and just say a quick prayer before pressing the button, that everything will work well, and I'll see you in the next one.